I have the privilege and the entrustment that I get to travel and speak to churches around the globe. And I don't see that as something that's just woohoo, yay for me. I see that as an entrustment of God that where I go, I'm supposed to be an observer and then I'm supposed to be a student and then I'm supposed to go to God and find out what it is that God would want to say to his church. And over the last few years of doing that in a season that has been very testing and very trying for the church. We've been through a pandemic. We've been through rioting. We've been through unrest. We've been through political breakdowns and breakups. We've been through division in our culture and in our world. And sadly, we've been through division in our church. And so as I've traveled and I have observed what has been going on in the church, I have become aware that many of us have been left a little shocked at what has happened as a consequence of everything that's happening in the culture around us. There are people that are not here today that you would have said absolutely would have been here, but for whatever reason over the last few years, they made a different decision. They, they, they stepped out instead of stepping in. They, they flaked out instead of foundations going down and and some of you are here and you're like, why are they not here? And why did this happen? And why did that person end up in the place that they ended up? It has been shocking and it has been revealing. And at the same time, it has been teaching to my soul and my spirit. And so today, I wanna help you as a church to understand some of the lessons that we must learn from the seasons that we have just journeyed through. Because God does not want any of you losing your substance. He doesn't want any of you losing the very thing that he put his son on a cross to die for, for you to inherit. He wants you fully alive and fully awakened to the destiny on the inside of you that the enemy is trying to steal and rob from you. And the best thing I can kind of describe my message today by painting you a picture with is by letting you into one of my epic parenting fails. Any parents in the room that have made some epic parenting fails? Yes, okay. Well, this was one of my very early stage parenting fails when my children were very young and they were at that age where Christmas was coming and I suddenly realized, wow, this Christmas, they're gonna realize it's not actually the box that's the gift. You know what I'm saying? Like you spent all that money the Christmas before and then they played with the cardboard instead of the actual gift. And I realized this year they're gonna get it. They actually realized there's a toy in there that they actually are gonna want to play with. And so me and my husband had been online and we'd ordered everything that Fisher Price was advertising. I mean, we had the whole thing. We had the keyboard with the microphone. We had the house with the lights and the doorbell. Like we had the whole thing going on. And so on Christmas morning when our kids came down, we couldn't wait to see their excitement as they got these gifts that we were giving to them. And as they opened the gifts and began to interact with the gifts, we realized our epic parenting fail. Because though we had bought these toys from the manufacturer and Fisher Price, we had failed to read the small print on the box that these items were in. And the small print just said three little words, but those three little words changed everything because those three little words were batteries not included. So when my child went to play the keyboard, there was no noise. When they went to push the doorbell, there was no sound. Then they went to put the light switch on, no lights were coming on. And on that morning, we realized we had bought something that was functional, but until we did our part, it was not powerful. And I'm here to let you know what has happened over these last few years is a lot of people have realized they were plugged into the wrong power source that they actually were borrowing their energy from other people's faith. They were borrowing their commitment from someone else's commitment. They were borrowing their perseverance from someone else's perseverance. And all of a sudden, the lights went out and they realized, wow, batteries are not included. And I feel like over the pandemic and over this season, it was like everybody that had an extension lead into somebody or something, it suddenly got ripped out. Like we didn't even meet like we used to. We were masked for some of us for weeks, for us in England for 18 months. We, we were pulled away from some of the things that were routine to us. And when the routine didn't hold us anymore, once the masks was lifted and life went back to normal, we didn't step back into our commitments. And so I 
began to go to my Bible because we know that God is powerful. We know that there's nothing lacking on God's end, but so often we rely on God to do our part. But God's like, this is a partnership. God does not want a robot. If you wanted a robot, he wouldn't give you a will. If you wanted a robot, he wouldn't give you the ability to make choice. God doesn't want a robot. He wants a relationship with you. And that means that he puts his part in, but you have to put your part in too. Hello, Christianity is not a spectator sport. Everybody is required on the field. Everybody has a part to play. You have to bring your own batteries. And so I read scriptures that are in my Bible, and guess what? They're in your Bible too. (laughs) Scriptures like 2 Peter 1 verse 5 that says, For this very reason, make every effort. How much effort? You just helped me illustrate a point just so beautifully, just right there. I just asked you all, what was the word I just read? I would say maybe a quarter of the room added their own batteries. Let's try that again. He said, for this very reason, make See the difference? See the difference right there? That's what the enemy doesn't want in the church. He wants a quarter of the room to bring their batteries. He does not want you all to bring your batteries because when you all bring your batteries, suddenly the temperature in the room goes higher, the volume goes higher, the agreement goes higher, and where two or three are gathered and agree, their miracles and signs and wonders follow. So he doesn't want you to say every. You know what goes through our mind in moments like that? I'm just going to linger here for a moment because this is the second service, so I can. And I'm just going to linger for a moment. You know what happens in moments like that? We just think to ourselves, someone else will say it. Someone else will say every. She didn't need me to say it. I'm having my latte. I'm just chilling. I I don't need to say every. Someone else will say it. But when you start applying that to all the other areas of your life, someone else will give. Someone else will join a small group. Someone else will say amen. Someone else will pray. All of a sudden, you see what the enemy does? Now we went from powerful to just functional. Make every effort to add to your faith. So this is about you and God. To add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control. And to self-control, you better add some perseverance. And to perseverance, you better add some godliness. And to godliness, some mutual affection. And to mutual affection, you better add some love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. If you are feeling ineffective or unproductive, I'm just asking. Asking, when was the last time you add? When was the last time you added to your faith? When you added to your faith perseverance? Or you added to your faith godliness? Or you added to your faith self-control? We are called to add to the life that Christ has given us for it to become fully alive and fully powerful. If your energy is borrowed, your consistency is compromised. I have been in church all my life, not because it's been perfect, hello. Not because they sang all the songs that I personally prefer. Not because every message preached was a slam dunk. There were some pretty bad ones preached. I'm pretty sure I was probably preaching them. I didn't stay in church and stay consistent because of all the people around me's commitment. I stayed consistent because of my commitment, because I was adding my own batteries. And so today I want to bring this alive for you because if your worship's weak, you need to add your own batteries. If your generosity fades when no one asks for it, you need to add your own batteries. If you don't honor unless you're told to honor, you need to add your own batteries. If you have no self-control unless someone's checking up on you. Hello. You need to add your own batteries. It's time for us to wake up. And so there's a story in the Bible that is an unusual story. I love unusual stories because most preachers don't preach from unusual stories. But that means that there's something in here God wants to say to you. And it's a parable that is told of 10 virgins. And it's this parable of these 10 virgins who are waiting for the bridegroom to come back. You know the bridegroom's coming, right? You know that we, the church, are like these 
people waiting, waiting for the bridegroom to come back. And, and so there's an instruction given to wait for the one that is returning, but to be ready. And so it says in Matthew 25, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like the 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. And the bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and they fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and they trimmed their lamps, but the foolish ones said to the wise, give us your oil because our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, you gotta go get your own. If this was written as a modern day parable, maybe it would say, hey, there was a church called Substance and God said to them, hey, I am coming back. So you better all get ready. I need you to get ready and I need you to build. I need you to reach and I need you to disciple. I need you to help those that are helpless. I need you to tell those that don't know. I need the lost to come home, get ready. And you were like, okay. And everybody starts to get ready and you go and get your modern day equivalent of your your lamp. Let's call it that you went and got your flashlight. And by the way, these are not flashlights. These are torches. That's the English word. I speak English. You speak a version of my language. I married an American, so I'm bilingual. I understand you all, so we're all good. But these are actual torches, but we'll go with flashlights for your purposes, okay? So it's like saying, and so they all went and grabbed their flashlight, right? Like, okay, yeah, God, I'm in. Yeah, I'm in the church. Yeah, I'm committed, I'm in. But it says, the bridegroom took a lot longer than they thought. Like, like things didn't happen as quickly as they had anticipated. Like the miracle didn't come when I thought the miracle would come. Like the breakthrough didn't happen when I wanted the breakthrough to happen. Like it didn't go according to my plan. And then it says at midnight, which we need to make sure we note, because whether you have your batteries or not, is not tested in daylight, it's tested in midnight. Whether you have your own walk with God or not is not tested in the room today, it's tested when you leave the room today. Whether you actually have perseverance is not tested in the good times, it's tested in the midnight times. Whether you have self-control or not is not tested when everybody can see you, it's tested when no one can see you. So at midnight, the cry goes out, He's coming, and so they go and grab their flashlights, and it says five of them grab them, and they really need to be able to see because now they really need to be ready, and when they go for their flashlight, nothing is happening. It's like over this pandemic, when things didn't go the way we thought they would go, or situations turned out a different way than we thought they would turn out, and people that said they were faithful, and people that said that they loved Jesus, they went for their flashlight, and wow, I, nothing's happening. And all of a sudden they realized, man, I, I brought my flashlight, I said amen in a service, but I forgot to add my own batteries. And then it says five that were wise in the midnight moment, they were like, I got this. I'm being tested, but I'm not gonna fail. I feel pressed, but I'm gonna persevere. I feel hopeless, but I'm standing on the rock that gives me my hope. I feel my marriage is falling apart, but I'm gonna cling on to the words of Jesus. I feel like I'm lost in this moment, but I'm gonna get found in his word. They had batteries and in the midnight moment, suddenly their lights all came on. And then it seems like it's cruel what happens next. Because the five without batteries turn to the five with batteries and they're like, hey, can we borrow your batteries? Because we didn't bring ours. And these five wise turn around to the five foolish and say, no, you can't. Not this time. You gotta go get your own. And can I say to you, because you just have to decide that we're friends because otherwise you're gonna be upset by me and I'm leaving on a plane anyway, so I'm just gonna say it anyway. 
Like some of you, you just need to hear the word no. It's not going to be me that shows up for you anymore. It's not going to be me that stands in the gap for you anymore. I can't anymore lend my faith to your faith. You've got to start bringing your own batteries. I can't call you 55 times to make sure that you're still hanging on with Jesus. I need you to actually get a hold of Jesus for yourself because there comes a moment where you realize no is actually the best help you can say to someone. I need you to actually start getting your own batteries, get your own prayer life, open your own Bible, Join a small group. Put yourself in. I cannot be that for you anymore. This life that Christ invites us into, this life that is overflowing with abundance, this life that changes everything about our life, it's, it's an invitation to a party. And the first thing this invitation says is, you need to bring your own batteries in England, because we are not sanctified and saved like you Americans. Sometimes you'll get an invite to a party, and on the invite, it'll say B-Y-O-B. And I know if you were to have an invitation with that on in this place, I know that would mean bring your own Bible. But in England, that is not what that means. But the invitation is saying to you, hey, I'm setting the table. Hey, I'm hosting the party. But hey, don't show up empty-handed. I actually want you to bring something with you. Though I've taken care of this much, I want you to bring something with you. There's nothing like bringing your own batteries to Jesus. It's nothing like bringing your own prayer, bringing your own faith, bringing your own hope, bringing your own expectation. There's something that happens when you bring your own to Jesus. Some of you, I want to say, are you not tired of watching Jesus do miracles in everyone else's life? Are you not tired of yay for you? Don't you want to be the one that has the testimony? Well, if you do, you have to bring something to Jesus. Remember the boy with the lunch? Remember how there was a crowd of thousands there's a crowd of thousands. There's in that crowd guaranteed the Ronald McDonald of the day. He would have been able to sort stuff out, source food, take care of it, but he never brought anything to Jesus. Didn't volunteer, didn't say, hey, I can help. Didn't say, hey, let me write a check and take care of this because I could. But he took one small boy who's just like, is no one going to do anything? And Jesus was waiting for somebody to bring him something. Jesus could have said a word and it would have been taken care of. But he was looking that day for who's going to bring me something. Because I want you to understand when you put your thing in my hands, everything changes. And he wants you to have the same experience. He wants you to lay your hands on the sick and the sick become well. He wants you to use your mouth to help someone find salvation. He wants to use your hands to write a check to bless someone else in need. He wants to use what you bring to him. Where are you bringing your own? Or where are you borrowing from everybody else? Your faith comes alive when you bring your own batteries. Second thing you need to know to do is you got to charge your batteries. <laughs> I have a car. It's a good car. It's a fairly new car. And it's on the driveway of my home. And after owning it for a little while, I constantly had a problem with it, which was every time I went to get in my car, the car would have a flat battery. And so I, after calling several different people out to come and jumpstart the car. I, I had to call and find out why this was happening. And they said, oh, well, what you need to understand is this car's battery, it's built so that it, is, it has to be used. Like, like you can't just let, and because I travel and I'm away, my car will sit for sometimes weeks, if not months, on the driveway of my home and no one is driving it. And so I was complaining about the battery, but the manufacturer was letting me know, no, unless you use the battery, the battery is going to go flat. You have to actually take the car somewhere. It is designed to go somewhere. It's not designed to sit on the driveway of your life. And I want to say to you spiritually, your faith is designed to go somewhere. That's why your faith is flat, because it's never gone anywhere. When was the last time you shared the gospel? 
When was the last time you brought Jesus to someone in need? When was the last time you stepped out in faith? That's when the car on the driveway gets to go and do what it was created to do. And all of a sudden you come alive. Got to charge your own battery. I feel sorry for the worship team. You know what I call them? The workout team. Because really, that's really what most Sundays they have to do. They're back there. They've already prayed up. They're rehearsed. They've been before God about leading you in worship. They're like ready. They come out here and there's half an auditorium full because everyone's still getting a latte. They're in here and they're like, okay, here we go. Let's start the workout. Nobody really wants to exercise today. Everybody's getting their latte. No one wants their lycra, but let's get them in here. And so they pick a song and they're like, okay, let's start with a beat that gets a little bit of movement in the house. Okay, let's go. Let's try. Get a little bit of movement. Start with a fast song. Let's try and get some energy in the room. Let's try and wake them up from their sleepiness. Like, like, okay, okay, we're doing good. Okay, let's go for a jumping jack for Jesus. Yes, I see half a hand on the third row. Woohoo! We're getting somewhere. Like, 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 like the pain for the worship team of trying to get your arm up because your arm's not been up all week. Because your voice has not been declaring his greatness all week. So they're having to work you out. And the Bible says, hello, it's in your Bible too. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. I will bring my own batteries of praise into the house of the Lord. I do not need a band to warm me up. I am already fully warmed up. I came this morning ready to praise Him. I came this morning filled with gratitude. I came this morning not for you to tell me to worship. I don't need telling. I am coming to let God know I am so grateful. I am so thankful. Where would I be without you? You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the worship. You deserve my best and my best song. I'm telling you, we got to change the way that we worship. It's not a performance for you to be in a concert at. The worship in this church is not going to be as good as the worship team. It's going to be as good as the revelation in your life and in my life about what worship is. When we come into the house with an attitude of, I am bringing my best worship. When you come to the house and you're like, I'm going to go to church today. And I'm not going to church for me. I'm going to church because there's someone that needs me. I'm bringing my own batteries to church. I'm going to pray for someone in the parking lot. I'm going to believe God for a word over someone in the foyer. I'm going to go and take someone out for lunch. I'm going to go and actually speak encouragement over another person instead of rolling into church. (sighs) Better be good today because I have had a really flat week. Like my battery is so low. I'm just going to go to church and they better charge me up. Come into church, you're like, whew, pastor better have a word. You're like, okay, okay, pastor. I'm pretty much flatlined. Get those paddles out. Like, charge me up in the name of Jesus. And so he comes and he's like preaching and you're like, like charge. Like suddenly your heart's back to life. You're like, yes. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you. I'll be back next week for the same thing. Charge holds Monday. Woohoo! Tuesday. Woohoo! Wednesday. Not so woohoo. Drag yourself back here on Sunday. Man, my marriage is flat. Man, the kids, it's flat. Man, my finances are flat. Man, my faith is flat. Pastor, hit me again. That is not your pastor's responsibility. Like the word in him should awaken what's already awoken in you. That the word in you already is leaping at the word in him. That there's a meeting together around the scripture because all week his words have been in your mouth and now you just come to speak out an amen and a hallelujah. As the word is opened, we cannot treat the church like our charging station. I'm going to say something that you're not going to like, but I'm leaving. Love y'all, but it's the truth that sets us free. Some of you are more committed to your iPhone charge than you are your spiritual. Like, like, 
Like you know how much battery is left on that phone. Like, like heaven forbid it got to red. You have a charger in your car. You have a charger in your purse. You have a charger in your kitchen. You have a charger in your bedroom. You have an extra charger next to the charger in case that charger doesn't work. Because you don't want to be out of power. Because, you know, heaven forbid you, you lose the, the ability to track the gossip on Instagram or listen to the craziness in the comments section. I mean, you just need to be in the know. And so you're not going to let your battery go low because, of course, you you're going to take responsibility to charge up that device. But if I was to check your car, if I was to check your home, if I was to check your bedside table for your spiritual charges, would I find them? Would I find on your bedside table a spiritual charger? Would I find in your kitchen a spiritual charger? Would I find in your group chat spiritual charging words? Would I find on your playlist of what you listen to, spiritual charging songs? Like, what are you listening to? Don't blame everybody around you for a flat battery when you know exactly how to charge a battery up. You know how to do it with your iPhone, so you know how to do it spiritually. That's why David said, uh, excuse me, soul. Why are you downcast? Why are you flat? You will praise the Lord. You will change your tune. You will flip to a different track. You will meditate on something different. He's speaking to his own soul. Some of you in here, I want to speak to some of you men in here. So you men in here, you need to take control of your soul. Stop allowing your moodiness to cause the rest of people in your house to feel this heaviness. Maybe you need to just get away for a moment and just go, hey soul, this is, this is it. We're breaking up. We're not going to be downcast anymore. You will praise the Lord. You will declare who God is. And I'm telling you, the atmosphere in your marriage will change. Your job will change. Your family will change. Not because anyone else did anything, but you charged your batteries. You found a word to speak into your household that was not from your downcast place, but it was from the place of beholding who He is. The amazing thing is, if you want to charge a battery, you know what you need? You need the negative to charge the positive. So anyone that's got negative right now, you have all you need. You literally have all you need to begin to charge up your battery. That's why the Bible says that He takes our ashes and He gives us instead His beauty. He takes our despair and He gives us instead His garments of praise. He's like, give me a negative. I know exactly how to help you charge the negative into a positive. Finally, we need to bring our own batteries. We need to charge our batteries. But finally, some of you, you need to hear this. It's time to change your batteries. This battery will power certain things. This battery will power larger things. And if I was to put a car battery on the platform, that has an ability to charge something even greater than either of these two put together. Not all batteries are the same size. Some of you need to change your batteries. Like you've been doing life, serving God at this level for so long. You come once a month. You attend the church, but you never served at the church. You receive, but you never give. You come when you're in need, but when you're in a good time, you don't show up. It's time to char change your battery. This battery only gets you so far. This battery gets you to a whole nother level. And that's why the Bible says, when I was a child, I used to talk like a child. I used to act like a child. I used to reason a child. But there came a day when I had to put my childish ways behind me and it was time to change. And start acting in accordance with what actually God has assigned me to do. You know what I feel like spiritually? I feel like this is going on in some of your world spiritually. Beep. 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 You know what that sound is? You ever been in your house? You're like, beep. What is that? It's so annoying. Beep. Somebody needs to turn something off somewhere. Beep. It just won't stop. It's a battery in your smoke alarm. 
It's letting you know you don't change me. Don't blame me when your house burns down. Some of you, uh, you'd rather wait for a fire than change your battery. I'll deal with it if it burns down. No, deal with it now. Change your battery now. Don't wait till your marriage is burning down. Deal with it now. Change your battery now. Don't wait till your faith's burning down. Deal with it now. Change your battery now. It is time. For some of you, it's time to change your battery in your thinking. It's time to change your battery in your confession. It's time to ch change your battery in your commitment. The name of this church is Substance. Substance. Substance speaks of a church that have discovered, man, I have to do my part. Man, I have to dig down deep. Man, I have to commit. Man, I have to show up. There has to be substance to my life. So when the wind comes and the rain comes, I am not knocked down. Why? Because I'm not borrowing power from anyone else. I've discovered that greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. I have discovered how to tap into my faith and add to it perseverance and add to it all these things that the Bible instructs us to add. So I don't know where this finds you today. For some of you, you need to leave this room today and go sign up for a small group. It's as simple as that. Oh, I feel so lonely in this church. Well, what were you doing about it? You come late, you leave early. How are you supposed to meet people? Change your battery, sign up, throw yourself in. What's the worst that can happen? You don't like it, at least you tried. But you can't complain until you try. Well, you know, I just feel like, you know, nobody appreciates me. Start waiting to appreciate it. And instead start doing something, start serving. Start blessing. Well, I wish someone to bless me. Start blessing someone else and maybe you'll find that you are blessed. I'm a local church girl. I think you probably got that by now. And I'm saying this because I love the church. I love you guys enough to not say what you wanna hear, but to say what you need to hear. We all need a reminder sometimes in our journey to say, hey, I need to do a little check on the inside. I need to ask, where's my battery flat? I need to ask, am I even bringing my own battery? I need to ask, where do I need to change my battery?